as we roll into July of 93, a lot of things are changing fast. Namely, the biggest names of the golden era of wrestling are all either gone or on their way out the door here in the WWF. Uh, Hogan is gone. You're about to depart from the company and go back to Japan. Hacksaw is wrapping up. Uh, Jake and Warrior had both left the year prior. And the list goes on and on. So, you know, as you're getting re ready to depart and kind of this company that you've helped to build to the point that it's at, do you have confidence that, uh, you know, this new crop of talent that they're going to call the new generation are going to be able to fill the shoes of you guys? You know, as a reminder, the WWF still had The Undertaker, Bret Hart, Lex Luger, Shawn Michaels, Yokozuna, Razor Ramon, and Diesel had just come into the company. So, you know, we know with the benefit of hindsight uh, that you know how how things would turn out but at the time did you see the guy a guy on the roster that could fill the void left behind by by yourself and the other members of the golden era you know yeah maybe a couple guys um brett, brett uh, i consider brett hart you know my heir. yeah uh, he, yeah he's he, he might have been a little bit you know but i mean again and brett hart was very, yeah brett hart was he was very good he was a great champion and why why I mean, he, he, he grew up in the wrestling business. His father was a promoter of uh, the Calgary territory. Yes. And so, I mean, there's, there's another second generation wrestler who, who, uh, you know, you know, loved the business and, and did very well. I mean, Lex, you know, Lex, Lex was good on the microphone. Lex had a tremendous body, but he wasn't the greatest, you know, technician in the ring. You know, he was a guy that you you know, you know, that needed, needed to be led, but, but, you know, I give him credit for, for being as good as he was. Yeah, for sure. And, yeah. you know, it's when you see a guy like Bret Hart, who's like, yep, he's got all of the technical skills, maybe not super polished on the mic, but you know, it's, yeah. he's, he's still pretty good. Um, when you see him and all of a sudden it's like, okay, he's becoming the guy. It's like, man, this is a very, very different dude than the model that had been working, you know, like these giant muscle bound guys. I mean, uh, you see Bret Hart. Are you like, OK, I can see him carrying the banner or were you a little skeptical? Uh, well, I wasn't skeptical because I, I, I knew his background and, you know, and, and Bret and I only had a couple of opportunities to wrestle each other. And and we had and we had great matches. And that's the other thing about Bret. Bret could. Brett could lead you. Brett could have, a, you know, and go out there and, and have, you know, a great match. And and I, I think that's, you know, you know, maybe I don't know, maybe that's what Vince uh, began to see and understand is that, you know, just because you you put a great big mu mu muscle head in the ring doesn't mean that he's a great wrestler, you know. And you know, I was a big guy, but I, you know, I mean, I had a decent body, but I was never a muscle head which is obvious. 